Oh, hi. I'm Chris from Mirror Windows. And what you were just looking at is part of what's been consuming hours and hours and hours of all of my days lately. I'm lucky that I can still post a plugin, but by God, I can. And the plugin I have for you is Channel 8. And I'm a little excited about that. Um, if I seem a little bit discombobulated, it's because I am struggling struggling with elaborate video things. Um, the reason you can see this is because I still have the uh, glorious Blackmagic A10 Mini working, and that lets me switch stuff around. I was using that image to make a new lookup table. Unfortunately, getting this thing to work has been a complete bear. I'm running this ATEM through an entirely separate Blackmagic capture card in order to make it work. This has been an absolute nightmare. I don't know what, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, at least I'm able to still do it at all, but this is a very ugly scenario, and I'm not happy with the way that it's not working. But uh, that said, here we are. Um, I'm not necessarily going to be able to do music jams until I get this in a more well-behaved scenario. But by God, even if I have had to reinstall OBS and build everything back from what it starts, I have more or less reproduced what I had before, before everything stopped working. And so, let's have a look at Channel 8. Here is some music playing through. Nothing at the moment. And I can turn on these plugins. This is channel 7. And it's meant to sound a little bit kind of studio-y. Like the idea with channel is it's a coloring plugin. Kind of like some of the other plugins I've made to that effect. And channel 8 is essentially the same thing as channel 7, complete with the new drive control that goes halfway to get to a spiral uh, saturation effect. And then from halfway to 200%, it goes from spiral to the original density effect, which has a fattening, thickening effect on things. And I can show you that by doing this. Spiral. Density. And the reason they're set up that way is because it's like one continuous control through two different kinds of air window saturation effect. And this is, again, channel 7. We've got um, the settings, which are really just a simple high pass and a simple slew clipping. So they're not really models of those things. The only reason they have these labels, and I'm not going to read the labels out loud, is because I measured impulse responses uh, from that type of equipment in order to get behaviors of these filters and things that corresponded to what you should get out of this type of hardware. But when we go to channel 8, it looks exactly the same because this plugin is meant to act the same as it always did. But the high pass is now the high pass out of capacitor 2. Essentially, it's not quite the same one, but it's using the same principle. And the slew clipping is the slew clipping out of slew 3. So everything is changed and different. And let's give them both like... the spiral output level. And let's cut back and forth between these and see whether I can demonstrate what happened when I updated channel this re recentest time. And this isn't meant to be the most wild intense effect, although you can make stuff pretty fat by turning drive up. But let's just play here. Channel 7. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit solider. Channel 8. I'll go back. 7. 8. See, 
what I'm hearing here is a fact that feels kind of like analog hardware. It's doing these things that I learned in recent revisions of this stuff. Here, let's move it around. Like, API? I'm sorry, I wasn't going to say that. It's not really, it's just a level, a setting for preset, as it were. And another one. Seven. And it's going to restart this little bit again. Listen to the highs, like the symbols of things. And of course, since this is channel 8, we can also turn it up and make it better. Or choose the preset that is warmer. So there you have it. This is an interesting sort of lineage of plugin. Like there has been a time here. Let me switch it back to the full, the full view here. With my elaborate system uh, video things, that has been such a pain in the butt to make work. So this plugin, channel eight, is the continuation of a series of plugins that are on the subtle side, like something like bus colors is medium subtle. I always describe it as a coat of paint, which this is not. Um, but bus colors throws a pretty obvious load of coloration onto things and it runs impulse responses. Channel has always been the one where I was using those like brand name things because that's channel has always had that. And I don't like to change it so radically, but I always take a while to explain that this is just presets for some controls in there, which is the same as a combination of, uh, now it's uh, spiral and density in a two-stage process, and a high pass that's been made to be kind of like capacitor two, and a slew clip that has been made to be what you get in slew three. But the console type here is a preset, and it's not actually a hardware model of anything like that. It is just different levels of these controls calibrated to what was happening in some impulse responses that I measured and studied and got my, my numbers right on those back in the day, back when I started making a channel. I've never changed them since. It's been like those magic number settings for what makes these colors do what they do. But the guts of the plugin and what makes channel have its sound is strictly Air Windows stuff rather than somebody's copyright schematic designs or anything like that. And of course, there's no pictures or anything. So this plugin channel has been the one that's competed with some very high class uh, plugins in other contexts. Like years ago, there was a shootout, and I remember I had come up with butt co bus colors, butt colors, yeah, right, bus colors at the time. And um, yeah, it's the Eddie Van Halen Brown sound. No, let's not get into that. Um, I had done bus colors and somebody was doing a shootout and they're going like, let's compare the console emulations of all these big names. Oh, and yeah, we'll throw this Air Windows thing in. What has he got? Okay. And they shot out certain very highly touted expensive subscription service these days, plugins. And instead of even trying to do bus colors, they just threw channel. And some of the time it won with people doing blind listening tests. And that was that was something. But the reason for that is that these plugins are not messing with the sound. They don't over-process. They have what you might call a really clean digital signal path. And all the more so now because 
for years now, I've been doing dithering to the floating point output bus. And there's a lot of stuff that I handle in here where these plugins don't hurt your tone. And incorporating things like the capacitor 2 and SLU 3 um, tone shaping into channel which already uses those techniques and then building it into something like uh, channel already incorporated the uh, spiral distortion algorithm that I use. So it becomes such an effective subtle tone shaper for when you're looking for your like analog studio vibe kind of thing without doing wild crazy aggressive things to the tone that I'm going to sneak it into the uh, Air Windows starter kit. So I'm going to be updating new updates and I'm going to be releasing it as a plugin. By the time you see this, you'll be able to download it. But it's also going to sneak its way into the Air Windows starter kit collection. Even though I don't have it really documented, there's not a new video for starter kit about that. But I feel like if people ask, I'll be like, yeah, put this on to shape the tone. It's kind of like what I use Interstage for, in that um, you can just put that on there, put as many of them as you want, and it just sort of colors and warms the tone a little bit. You can use it as a boost. You can use it as a very soft overdrive. It'll make stuff a little bigger. It'll make stuff a little fuller, and it will restrict the extreme lows, and it will restrict, restrict the slew rate in exactly the way that it should to give you digital tones that are not going to sound like they're coming out of a DAW. They're digital tones that are going to sound like they're coming out of a real-world studio from back in the day when they had to run everything through electronics and then recapture it in order to make their CDs and whatever out of that. So there you have it. Air Windows Channel 8, which is going to go into the Air Windows Starter Kit. And this is one of those ones where I feel like it is a continuation of what I previously had. Unlike SLU 3, where every single version of the SLU plugin acts totally different. And if you use extreme aggressive settings on that, um, the extreme aggressive settings on SLU and SLU 2 and SLU 3 are all wildly super different. With channel 8, what the SLU control is doing, what the high pass is doing, is already such a subtle, delicate effect that the changes that I made in these algorithms to bring them up a notch, to get them a little bit more analog-like, there's pretty much nothing that can really go wrong in that stage. I don't think there's any audio that you can have that won't be better with channel 8 than it was with channel 7. And I say this also saying like it's not like channel 7 was bad. I just feel like the work that I did updating these plugins has taken it to where I feel like there's no downside here. And if there is, be sure and tell me because I'll have to scramble to fix it because that's what I do. But I think this is just all good no bad, and that you're going to enjoy it. Now, the reason I'm still here doing this is because I have a Patreon, and I tell people about that. I have this, I've always had this great hang up against telling people, oh yeah, I have a Patreon, so support that if you're using my plugins as if they were being sold. Like, if you would buy it at 50 bucks a pop, you can throw that towards the Patreon. If you can't afford it, use the plugin anyway. That's what I'm there for. I'm trying to help you. If you want to follow and like and subscribe the YouTube thing, like as if I was some kind of YouTube guy, yeah, that is how that works. Like that, the YouTube channel is going to have more people watching it and more people seeing the stuff that I do if that stuff is done. That said, I don't need it done because I'm going to be doing this work and giving you plugins regardless. So it's really kind of up to you. It's like, should I be just your little secret? and just doing this kind of stuff, and only you know, you know about it? I could, 
It's maybe a bit of a downer. I like having people watching the YouTube videos and stuff. So it's kind of up to you. Regardless, this is my side of the thing. This is what I do. And, you know, they can't all be zingers. I feel like I'm going to be putting out some of the uh, dither reimaginings and things. And there's a variety of other stuff that I have in the pipeline. Some of which is great fun. And some of which is just me patiently working through some of the stuff that I feel needs to be done. But this one, Channel 8, I think people will really enjoy. Because there's a lot of people out there looking for your fancy free plugin that you can throw onto the mix bus or a channel or both or whatever that will just shape things in such a way that it starts feeling like what you wanted it to feel when you know you you look at videos of people cutting classic tracks or whatever and they're going into the studio and they have the big enormous mixing desk and it's like wow that's so cool we don't really get that vibe anymore. We get something that feels like it's coming out of math equations because it is. And channel eight is a nice little step in the direction of being able to get the tones you want, even if you don't have the giant mixing desk and stuff. And honestly, I kind of feel like as much as I like things like that myself, um, my experiences with video hardware in the last couple of weeks have left me, on the one hand, with a great respect for how fragile the computer side of it all is, because the video stuff has been working fine. The reason I'm able to do the switcher and, like, here we can go over and look at the, the paint samples that I'm calibrating stuff with. The reason I'm able to do that is that the, the video switcher and the cameras and the stuff, those are still working fine but they're not talking to the computer anymore and I'm having to come up with ridiculous workarounds. And when you have a giant recording studio with a big old like Neve desk or something like that, and that goes wrong, it's a nightmarish scenario. And it's exactly what I'm facing with this ridiculous stuff where I'm using, I'm trying to get my video gear up to snuff and when it doesn't go right, it's like, oh my God, I'm not just downloading drivers again. Now I've got like resources sunk into getting this right. And the neat thing about plugins and like me giving you channel and console and the Air Window Starter Kit and stuff is you can use those and they're very simple. And if they work, they work. And if they don't work, they don't work. And you can be on my Patreon and I really appreciate it when you do, but you don't have to. And you can make sure stuff works for you first. And maybe it's just not as big of a deal. Anyways, that's just a thought, as uh, another YouTuber likes to say. And I really hope that you like Channel 8. I'm going to get back to trying to get my video world back together again. I don't think I'm going to have the, the music jams going just yet. Not that people are super excited about that. But honestly, I do learn really interesting things from doing that. And when I learn those things, I like to share them. And there's a lot of stuff that can be learned. I'm probably going to end up having to get into things like uh, Blender and compositing and all other forms of creativity rather than just making plugins and only talking about mixing. But for now, I have been Chris from Air Windows, and I'm giving you channel eight. And I'll catch up with you guys now that I have the video system working again uh, on my Monday Q&A. So if you've got any questions about channel eight or any of this stuff, then by all means, drop by at 11 Eastern Standard Time on Monday on this very YouTube channel. We'll see whether when I reconstructed the entire streaming and everything rig, whether I broke that too, or whether I can get it together and show up at 11 on time. Usually I'm pretty good about that. And I do seem to have the workaround for being able to connect these cameras into the machine and stream them. So, woot, go me. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Back to that, oh, fade to black. Bye-bye.